Hi, my name is Shabnam. I'm a research scientist here at Bosch working in human-machine interaction group, and I'm very excited to be here with my colleague, Pan Pan, to introduce our group to you. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Pan Pan. I'm also uh, working on the human-machine collaboration topic at Bosch Research. So today, Shabnam will first give an introduction of uh, what uh, about what are the topics we have been working on, and uh, yeah, she was done. Uh, so, uh, the topic we are really excited to work here at Bosch is human-machine collaboration. If you think about the everyday life, there are so many tasks that human is so good at, but machine usually has so much trouble doing them. And also there are so many tasks, let's say repetitive tasks, that machine might be so good at doing them very accurately, but human would be having so much trouble to perform them in a short amount of time. So our idea is asking human and machine to work together to empower their both both abilities to make a superhuman with much more perception and knowledge and also to make a better machine to help us in our everyday life. Uh, so here at Bosch, we do focus on many core technologies such as robotic manipulation, text mining, uh, audio analytics, and visualization. And we do apply these technologies to so many different use cases such as IoT, Industry 4.0, smart home, and smart cars. Uh, how we do, uh, so here first I'm going to introduce you how AI can help humans. So our goal is empowering human capabilities. What we do in our group is that we take different modalities that we see in the environment such as visual clues, text, and audio and speech that we hear around ourselves. And we combine this information with domain knowledge, context knowledge, and user knowledge. And we translate them to some specific applications, such as personal assistance, conversational AI, and augmented reality. As I mentioned, our, uh, our goal is empowering human with domain-specific AI. Here, I focus on one of the uh, one of the use cases we work that I focus on personally, which is intelligent audio analytics. If you think, of course, the speech is one of the main. Okay. No, it's okay. We can continue hearing that. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, what I wanted to say was that <laughs> if you think about speech, of course, it's one of the main uh, input and the way of communicating with outside world as a human, right? But there are so many other sounds that we can hear in the environment, such as the sample of sounds you just heard, right? By these sounds, you can guess kind of what kind of environment you were at, where you at a beach or where you at a restaurant, right? Just by listening to the noise in that environment. Or you can guess what kind of machine are you are operating. Is that machine is uh, working in a, in a right mode or is it broken, right? Uh, so here in our uh, group, we focus on signal processing and machine learning techniques to discover three kind of sounds. The first one is environmental sounds, as you heard, is it beach? Is it in the office? Is it in the restaurant? The second one would be machine sounds, right? We hear, we listen to the different machines in the environment and we try to recognize if they are malfunctioning or they are working in the right state. And finally, human sound, but non-speech human sound. Imagine you might be coughing or sneezing and that might be a clue that you might have some health issues and you might want to go to a doctor, right? Uh, so the audio analytics field is um, kind of newer compared to vision or speech technology that already exists. So we have so many challenges uh, at this field and the main one would be uh, lack of data as always exists in artificial intelligence and also we need to be really robust um, toward the other uh, different kind of noise and environments that we are at. Uh, so here's some of the use cases we work on. Uh, the first one, we can focus on physical security and automation. You think uh, that in most places, the physical security systems are based on cameras, but there might be so many situations cameras might fail. Let's say if it's dark at night or if it's foggy, so the camera might not see uh, what's happening in the environment. But also there are some events that camera is visual clues are not able to capture them. Let's say gunshot, right? Uh, with a camera, if the gunshot is not in the like visual field, you can't uh, basically capture that. So, 
Our idea is including microphone to a camera to understand more information about our environments. In this case, such as gunshot, glass break, and a smoke alarm can be sounds that can um, alarm our physical security system. The next use case is Industry 4.0. As I mentioned, we would like to put microphone in our plants and listen to the machines that are working on those plants. And for this, this is a very easy step to move toward Industry 4.0, since the only thing we need to do is basically we put a MEMS microphone on these devices and just listen to them to see if they are operating correctly or not. And the third one would be automotive sensing and diagnosis. Uh, of course, autonomous cars, um, they are hot topics these days, and uh, they, are in, um, uh, they are having so many sensors already on them, such as, let's say, radar, camera. But we believe that autonomous cars need to have the hearing sense as well. Uh, one of the important use cases would be, for example, hearing emergency vehicles. If there is siren happening, for example, police car or ambulance, so these autonomous cars need to understand these sounds and act accordingly. And another use case uh, can be listening to your car parts. For example, your car engine. If you go to repair shop, so many of the very experience like repair uh, shops, they just listen to your engine and they would guess if you have a problem. So this is our idea to do that automatically. And finally, to give you some idea uh, how we perform these acts, so basically we do use microphones to get this raw audio input from the environment. And this information, we do some signal processing to enhance this signal to remove some environmental noise that we don't want them. And we do use domain knowledge, meaning that we do look into what kind of environment we are performing. Are we in a factory? Are we in a house? Are we in a car? And based on that, uh, we extract some features. And finally, we do machine learning and AI to detect what kind of audio events was in the environment. Next, my colleague Pam Pan, she will explain now how human can help AI. Um, so uh, here comes the other side of story. How can human help make AI more intelligent and more uh, reasonable to the humans. So um, our approach is actually a uh, very uh, much human in the loop uh, method for big data analysis, which we call visual analytics. So uh, visual analytics is uh, actually a technique which combines um, technologies from many different fields. And one of these fields is uh, data mining. And with data mining, we basically uh, trying to gain insights from data with automatic algorithms and identify the patterns inside it. And uh, uh, the other technique is visualization. Basically, uh, we can draw the uh, charts to show different trends and patterns detected by the data mining algorithms and then show or present to the users. And the most important part is uh, user interaction. Actually, uh, in this user-centric approach, we want to really take in uh, users' input or users' knowledge into uh, the data analysis process so it does not appear as a black box to the uh, users. So um, one use case that is very much related to uh, this um, visual analytics topic is explainable, explainable AI. And um, so uh, basically, um, mo in most of the cases, uh, we use AI as a black box. Basically, the machine learning model takes the input and then produce some output um, to, uh, for example, in autonomous driving, uh, we take the video input uh, from the camera and then uh, the steering wheel will, will take the corresponding directions. And Or uh, in medical diagnostics um, solutions, um, the AI usually take in an, an image and then uh, tell the doctor or the patient what kind of disease it is. But this kind of black, go black box approach is usually not much reliable or people do not really um, uh, want to use uh, the machine learning model as a black box. So um, with visual analytics, we can uh, present the explanation to the users actually, and uh, then the user can provide feedback to the model and continuously improve the model until the model becomes um, transparent or explainable for the users. So why this is important, as I explained, 
uh, we have these um, fairness issues because we want to know AI is making its decisions based on some meaningful features instead of um, other features like gender or um, which can make this uh, model unfair to certain populations. And also we want to make this model robust and uh, on the other hand, there is also this GT GDPR regulation, uh, which requires every decision made by uh, AI to be explainable to the humans. So the user has the right to assess the explanation to the uh, decision made um, by an algorithm. So uh, now let's go in on our deeper technical dive uh, to look at a recent research paper we have published um, at uh, ACM CKDD this year, and which is about uh, interpretable and uh, steerable uh, sequence learning. And that has application in many different uh, AI fields like text mining um, or medical diagnostics and so on. Recurrent neural networks have shown impressive performance in modeling sequence data. They have been successfully used in a lot of applications, sentiment analysis, machine translation, speech recognition, and so on. However, they are considered as black boxes since it is very difficult to explain their predictions. Without explainability, it could cause trust and ethics issues. How can I trust the predictions coming out of a black box? These problems will limit the applications of these deep learning models in various decision-making scenarios. For example, a data scientist has developed a sequence prediction model to predict the risks of future problems of a car based on its historical faults. However, the mechanics and repair shops may find it difficult to choose the right maintenance strategy with just prediction results. Sometimes he even suspects that the modeling is wrong. The need for explanation is pervasive in such decision-making processes. The predictive model serves as a smart analysis module rather than an automatic end-to-end -end solution. Our idea is to explain the predictions by providing similar examples. Such case-based reasoning strategy is commonly used in our daily life. For example, why classify a restaurant review, pizza is good but service is extremely slow, as negative? This is because it is similar to two prototypical negative sentences good food, but worse service, and service is really slow. We use sequence encoder R, which encodes the input sequence into a fixed length embedding vector H. The model learns K prototype vectors that are most representative in the embedding space. We compute these similarities between H and the prototype vectors. The similarity scores are used as a source for prediction. To ensure that the prototypes are readable, we project the prototype vectors to their closest training samples every few epics. To further improve interpretability, we've simplified the prototype sequences using a beam search based algorithm. To utilize expert knowledge, we design an interaction scheme which allows human users to incorporate their domain knowledge into the model. We build interpretable and steerable sequence models for vehicle fault prediction, sentiment analysis, protein classification, and heartbeat classification. You can get explanations to the accurate predictions on the fly. Okay. Um, yeah, and here. Um, I would like to thank uh, our HR Monica for the very nice voiceover of the video. And uh, <laughs> so, um, if you have any questions about the paper, you can search it online. So there is a title um, below um, at the bottom of this slide. And uh, yeah, so uh, now let's move on to the next topic and uh, see how our Bosch is enabling a new area of ability. <laughs>